effects. He can't help it though. You might want to deride him and go, Oh, he's got an inferiority complex and a little willy. What do you think he's been through a lot as a kid? His home planet blew up, his father died in the most heinous of ways, and now he has to go from one kind of life to lead another in order to just to stay alive. Yeah, that's a lot for a kid. So Dragon Ball Z comes along, and it's the start of an immense change in Vegeta's character. When we first see him, he is a power-hungry villain, desperate to use the Dragon Balls against Lord Frieza in order to avenge his home world. Anyone who gets in his way, they're dead. However, over the course of the series, you kind of get the feeling that Vegeta's priorities change. Once Frieza's destroyed at the end of the Namek saga, Vegeta doesn't really have any drive anymore. Frieza's gone, there's no one to take revenge on for his world and people and planet. What else is he gonna do in this time? <gasps> of course, Kakarot. That guy that embarrassed him on Earth. That guy who is a low-class warrior, compared to a Saiyan elite? How dare he beat him! He's gonna take his revenge on him. Yes, Vegeta's fueled by revenge for his entire life, and now he has a true goal. So yeah, he's not done with him. He will have his rematch once and for all. But it'll just take a little bit of time. Besides, Earth looks kinda nice. You know, it's not on fire, it's not being ruled by a tyrannical dictator. Oh, and also that Bulma chick, it's pretty hot and strong-willed, like Saiyan women. Vegeta will stick around. Well, sometimes. But it seems quite clear that Vegeta at this time doesn't really have a social life. All by myself. I want to be all by myself. All the time. The rest of the series sees Vegeta go through a whole slew of emotions, from mediocrity to anger to frustration. And then finally to accept it, he flirts with disaster and evil one more time in the Margin Buu saga, when he allows Barbadi to take control of his body and for him to become Margin Vegeta, strong once more, and then have one more sparring match with Kakarot. But in the end, no kind of evil dictator is going to control him again. He's had that happen with Frieza, he's not going to let that happen with Barbadi. And so his Saiyan pride carries him through, and the control is ebbed away. Yet he still keeps that cool tattoo. You see? Love conquers all! The love to beat Kakarot into a bloody pulp. It's still love. But really, it's a true sign that Vegeta's growing up. That scene with him coming to terms that he's gonna have to sacrifice himself in order to save the Earth, him hugging Trunks for the first time ever since he was a baby, that's grown up stuff for a guy who was all about himself not that many years ago. His atoning for his past sins is a truly remarkable and poignant moment in Dragon Ball. Those don't come often, but when they do, they're powerful. Now we've got Super, and Vegeta's just as grump as ever, but there's actually something different about him. He's a lot more relaxed and more willing to spend time with his family. Not totally willing, but a damn sight more willing than in Z. Humanity is starting to seep into his psyche, and it all crescendos in the moment when he says, That's my bomber! After Beerus, a person that he utterly feared as a child, and even now, slaps his wife Bulma. That sentence and subsequent fight sequence resonates with fans across the land. That and the bingo dance. Does Vegeta have a sense of humor? Seems like he does. Perhaps the emotional element of humanity, which gives Gohan, Goten, and Trunks such potential, is beginning to have an effect on Vegeta. If this is the case, then this goes some way into explaining how Vegeta has grown so much as a character throughout Super. As Super advances, Vegeta really begins to show some interesting character development. For someone who's been so synonymous with being uptight and serious, Vegeta begins to show his princely manner. We really start to believe him as the prince of all Saiyans. Up until now, it's just been a phrase he's thrown around, but now? Yeah, I believe it. Especially when he has the chance to meet Universe 6's Saiyan champion. Kaba. Vegeta finally displays princely respect. Going forward, the Saiyan shows moments of compassion and understanding and contentment that I've really never seen before from him, and really from any other character. When I say that, it doesn't have to be all simpering and crying and talking about your feelings. It's just through actions, understanding, silence. They have to understand, and Vegeta he really shows that. Vegeta may have never got the chance to destroy Frieza once and for all, but he's had a lot of chances to shine and he's taken that by the horns. And it proves that he 
is the greatest character in this show. Goku may be the main character and fundamentally the linchpin of the series, but his recent acts of stupidity, which is ridiculously often even for Goku, has really diminished his luster in my eyes, whereas Vegeta's kind of just gone from strength to strength. He's gone forwards, whereas Goku's really started to go backwards. No one can say that Super's given Vegeta the cold shoulder. He's had some great one-liners, some great fight sequences, and some awesome behavioural character development. It even affects Vegeta's fighting style. Gone are the days where he's so uptight and inflexible. He's a lot more lucid, and it shows in his stance. At first, I just thought it was the animators making Vegeta slouch, but upon further reflection, it's just him taking Whis's advice of loosening up and just chilling out to effect, and therefore it contributed to Vegeta whomping Black's ass in episode 63, which has been the peak of his excellence. Some fans may want him to stay the same as he was in Z, uptight, serious, not wanting to make friends with anybody, but I really don't think that's the right. Dragon Ball Super is a new series and it needs to evolve the characters in some shape or form, and for the most part, it's been successful. In Vegeta's case, he's become a lot more grounded more rounded in terms of personality and outlook. He's really mesmerized the community in how much he's grown up. And really, good on him. He carries the Saiyan torch and he's proud to do so. He is going to show everyone across the universes that the Saiyan warriors are not to be trifled with. Unless Goku's eating a trifle, in which case then you can trifle with them. He is the prince of all Saiyans and he's never gonna let anyone forget that. Whatever Kakarot can do, he can do better. Goku and Vegeta may have both been training with Whis, but Vegeta, he didn't need no sitting in the ceremony. He was able to attain the power of Super Saiyan Blue all on his own. Even going Super Saiyan for the first time, he did that on his own, in space, through the power of determination. Vegeta can do anything. He is a Saiyan Elite. He possesses the natural talent to get stronger. Stronger even than Goku. Super has nurtured that, and honestly, I like Vegeta more than I like Goku in this new series. Shocking, I know, but it's the straight up track. I've grown up, and so is he. Goku, not so much. I still like Goku, but he's really not done enough to warrant praise from me in Super. Not nearly as much as Vegeta. I mean, with Vegeta, bravo. Vegeta has come through thick and thin, and has delivered in space. What do you guys think? What are Vegeta's best moments in Dragon Ball Super? Do you think he can do even more? Leave a comment below and let's get this discussion going. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Until the next one, be sure to like and subscribe. Until then, see you later.
So be it. Hey everyone, Benny the Comic Story in here, and you're probably watching that title to the video going, what the heck, DC stole videos from Benny? Well, this is actually kind of a funny story that I wasn't actually touching on and I didn't respond to for quite a few months, but recently the people in charge of the DC Fans channel reached out to me again and I tried to work out our same old deal we had. The deal I had with DC Fans was that I would make a video for them in my normal format and then I would re-upload it to my channel a month or a couple of weeks later. So they would get like a timed exclusivity on my video. That's pretty normal for a lot of other YouTube channels out there. But what ended up happening was a lot of you guys went to those videos and you accused DC of stealing the videos off of my channel. It's the weirdest thing ever. Guys, DC writes these stories. If they want my videos, they're more than welcome to have them, but we worked out this exclusivity thing. I did like Death of Superman for them, and I've done a couple other things like who is various members of teams like Doom Patrol, things like that over on the DC fans channel. And then you guys accuse them of stealing my videos. They're not stealing them at all. I completely let them take the videos. 
when they write incredible stories and they want to use the videos, of course I'm going to let them. I was lucky that they let me use the videos on my channel as well. But since a lot of you guys are still accusing them of stealing comic story and videos, I thought I would make a quick video right here explaining, guys, DC is not stealing my videos. Don't worry about it. I've worked out various arrangements with them to upload videos there and then re-upload them back to my channel so that you guys who don't know that I'm over on the DC Fans channel with them can come watch the video on my channel. But I also want to let you guys know, I guess, since we're talking about the DC Fans channel, if you don't know what the DC Fans channel is, it's actually a community project where if anybody wants to make YouTube videos oriented towards DC Comics, they will allow you to submit the video and they'll upload them. You can have 100 subs, you can have 10 subs, or you can have a million subs like me, and they will work with you and get videos out there for the community to see so that they can showcase DC fans and the DC YouTube community. So what I'm going to do is basically she, the, the woman in charge of the DC fan channel reached out to me recently to say that she's still getting accused of stealing my videos. So I said, okay, I'm going to make this video explaining that you guys are not stealing my videos. I, I am letting you use them. And then I'm also going to put the link down below in case any of you guys who want to be comic book YouTubers want to get started by working with DC. You can submit through her form and she'll contact you and you'll work out some videos to do together. She'll have you review things, talk about cosplay, talk about action figures. They do a lot of stuff over there, kind of centralized around the DC fan community, hence why it's the DC Fans channel. I'll link the channel down below along with the submission form. So anybody who wants to be involved in the comic book YouTube community, it's a great starting point for you. And even if you're someone like me who's been around for a little while, they're really great to work with and they do a lot of good things for the YouTube community. So that's all I had to say guys. I knew this was going to be a short video. So at the end of this video, I'm actually going to attach an unboxing of a giant bat glove. Here, I'm going to walk over to the bat glove right now. You know what? No, I'm not. I'm not going to walk over to the bat glove. What I'm going to do is tell you guys to watch the unboxing and you'll see a life-size bat glove and a life-size Batarang, and you're gonna see me basically breaking my toe. You're gonna see it in the video. It legitimately happened. That hurt for like three weeks. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Submit to DC fans if you wanna be a part of that community, and I hope you enjoy the giant unboxing. I'll see you guys next time right here. Hey, guys, Benny the Comic Story in here. Now, this video may sound a bit off, and that's because we have to film this on our phone because we're actually missing the actual camera. We loaned it to a friend. We're going on vacation, so he was gonna play with it. Then I got this giant box. This is my giant box, but I knew you guys would love to see what I have in this giant box. So we're gonna open it up for you guys to check it out. Now I do know what this is. I ordered it at New York Comic Con. Uh, and it's from Triforce Collectibles. So these guys put out insane collectibles. Like you might have seen my Black Mask video a little while ago. But this is a life-size bat gauntlet, if I can get it out. That's gonna be the game of the night. Can I get it out of this package? So, and if you happen to see the Gears of War loot right there, that's gonna come, uh, we're doing a video for Loot Crate real soon involving that, but you'll see that next week too. This is, yeah, I'm filming this, this video's gonna come out in a week. Okay, Batman Arkham City, see? Bomb the casing. Now, the sad thing is, Triforce Collectibles puts out amazing stuff, but you cannot order this anymore. When I was at New York Comic Con, I found out they had a few left in their warehouse, and I convinced them to give me one. I'm gonna have to help you. Huh? I'm gonna have to no, help no, you. I got it. I got it. You got it? I convinced them, well, not to give me one, I bought it, but. <laughs> I, I was like, hey, I'm Comic Story. Did I get one for free? And they were like, who? <laughs> I was like, gotcha! How much? Got no boxing! What the fuck? Really? Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> All right. Man, I've been going to the gym like crazy and I'm breathing heavy. All right, so screw this. Really? Get it ripped right?
where we started. <laughs> okay. I got this giant knife. I know, it's a little knife. If you're in Australia, you know what a big knife is. Got two pieces. My toe really hurts. Like, really, really hurts. I was making sure to cut it. Okay. All right. Oh! Oh! Holy shit! Look at this thing! Worth it! All of that hassle! <laughs> Look, I got punched by that man. <laughs> Alright, part one down. Why would you have the little slits in here? That's the battering. We'll get to that in a minute. And I don't know what this is. For those of you guys wondering, it's Triforce Collectibles. I'll put the link to their website down below. This is not a paid sponsorship at all. They totally made me pay for this thing. Hate you guys for that. But this stuff is so incredible, you need to know about it, guys. You really need to know about it. Oh, whoa! Okay. So. How is that gonna fit on there? It will. Sorry if you guys are very bored by this video. I don't know why you would click a video involving collectibles. If, if that's if you're bored. It's a legit battering. It's legit. If anybody breaks into our house to steal this, I'll just chuck this thing at their head. Does that sound good, Dad? This is supposed to go like in here. Put it, and then we're gonna put the battering. Oh, you know what? Box is gonna go here. The battering's gonna go here. 
They made me buy this. It is expensive. This thing was, I think, $800 or something crazy like that. So my credit card debt is really high for Batman replicas. I'm just saying. You can't buy this anymore, but they do have more cool stuff. Um, but I also have a Batman cowl coming in. So I'm going to show you guys that when we get it in. It'll go right here next to our other stuff. So we have the Batman gauntlet. We have the black mask. And it'll replace Moxie. Moxie will go away. Sorry, Moxie. You're beautiful, but you will go. No. Yeah. And then we have the Green Lantern right here. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I honestly have no idea what I'm gonna put this in front of. I'll probably do a quick vlog or something in front of this and then be like, check it out as I open up this giant bat claw. But either way, uh, it might be a video on its own. Whatever it turns into, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter, at Comic Story, and on Instagram, at Comic Story. And I'll see you guys next time right here when I open up crazy stuff in my house. Woo, crazy stuff. It's time for three more tales to see if you'd be interested in more of these stories. Today we're going to be seeking out a group of teenagers trying to use their powers for good, a group of former Avengers who are tired of being pushed around, and a young girl trying to become Iron Man. As usual, let me know which of these books you enjoy in the comments down below, and if you truly, truly enjoy any of these, then remember, a lot of them are depending on your sales to continue. These are all very early in their life, and it's through the sales that they will continue. Eventually, we'll do the full stories for each of these, so remember, these first issues will be in larger videos. The first story begins with nothing more than a rumor. A rumor of Generation Zero by Dr. Thomas. A rumor of power and visions by Dr. But no one knows how to find them. The rumor is you go into a chat room and you set the channel to zero and you state your case. If they like it, they'll find you. So our help needing person clicks on the zero chat channel and enters it. Inside are countless individuals pleading their cases, each wanting help from these mysterious individuals. And our person throws her case out there. Her name is Keisha Sherman, and she's calling from Rook, Michigan. It's called the Redneck Divide because it can afford all of the nice things, all of the latest cutting-edge technology because of a recent emergency manager appointed by the state. Everybody got with the program except for a single boy named Steven. It started with notes between Steven and Keisha, but it eventually developed into more of a relationship. But he seemingly had the ability to look past things, and he saw Rook for what it really was, a phony town for phony people. He started opening up doors that shouldn't be opened, and then he died through an accident. But Keisha knew that this accident was weird, because it was supposedly a car accident, and he was supposedly drunk. Yet, Stephen was straight-edged. He never drank or smoked or anything. Keisha believes that Stephen was murdered, and no one in this phony town wants to help her prove it. Suddenly, a giant head appears before her, telling her that she has successfully contacted Generation Zero. Do not tell anyone about this communication and destroy whatever device she contacted them on. Her situation has been placed in queue for proper handling, and do not contact them again. Then the screen went dead and she ran into the bathroom to drop her laptop into the shower. She called down to her dad, telling him